Hi, I'm Alex, and today we're going to be doing a video on the installation of two water blocks to be connected to two very large uh, CPUs. These are the Intel Xeon uh, 5690s, which are the fastest consumer processors on the market today. So these two big, big uh, heat sinks are what we're going to be removing and replacing them with Coolant CPU 370 CPU water blocks. So this process hopefully will be uh, fairly painless and straightforward and hopefully uh, rather quick. So the first thing we need to do is turn the machine around and, replace and, and remove the back plates from the CPUs. So let me, as I'm removing them, I'm going to have my hand on to the other side, right over here, and I'm going to be holding the big heat sink so it doesn't fall over. So I already removed a couple of screws back here, so I'm going to remove this, these last two screws. There we go. Ooh, they're going kind of slow here. There we are. Okay, that's one. And here I'm about to remove the second. There we go. So here's the back plate. You've got to be very careful not to scratch the motherboard as you're doing this, or you're going to have all kinds of problems. Okay, see so these are the four uh, pins that are going from the other side of the motherboard. So I'm holding them here. Now, I'm going to be turning this around so you can see the front. There we go. <clears throat> so here's the front of the heat sink. And now basically I'm going to lift it right off. And there it is. Okay. So this fan is connected to the motherboard. Let me unhook the fan. There we go. And this is the uh, heat sink. So um, if anybody wants a relatively brand new heat sink, uh, please let me know and I'll, sit, I'll ship it to you. I only had it installed for about a week while I was benchmarking the PC. So as you can see here, this is the primary socket. This is where the primary CPU is and there is the CPU right there. So I'm going to basically be doing the same thing with the other one. So let me do that. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do is remove one of these screws. There we go. And the washer. And I'm going to remove the other one. Well, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because I had to move the uh, motherboard tray a little bit. So let me get a screwdriver so I can uh, there we go so I can undo this. There we go. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now, as before, I'm going to hold the CPU heat sink from the other side so it doesn't fall over and remove the last of the two remaining screws. So, there's one, mm -hmm. and there's the other. Okay, so here I am removing the heat sink and unplugging it from the motherboard, which is right around here. And that's the second heat sink. So if you need another one, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. So let me remove these old, no longer needed screws and back plates for the CPU heat sink. All right. And that's about it as far as the removal of the processor heat sinks. Now, what I'm going to be doing is moving, it looks like one of the washers fell to the front, so I'm going to be moving that. There we go. And there's one more washer right there at the bottom. So we'll remove that. And as I'm doing this, the machine turned on, so let me turn off the machine right away. There we go. 
Okay. Now, I actually not only turned it off, but I unplugged it from the wall. So we should be okay. Now, there we go. Now what I'm going to be doing, first of all, is cleaning these uh, two CPUs with all this thermal grease. And the best way to clean these is to use Q-tips. And the reason you want to use Q-tips and not any other kind of water is because the water will simply get into all of the little crevices and whatnot. And that's the last thing you want to have happen. So I'm trying to smear it off like so. I'm trying to clean as much as I can off of it. And as I'm cleaning it, you should be able to start seeing the Intel logo right there on the processor. There we go. All right. So that's pretty much all I need to do to remove the thermal paste off of the first processor. Looks fairly clean now. Now I'm going to have to do the same to the other one. So the other one is right over here. Looks like I got a little bit thermal paste, a little bit more than I needed. So let me try to remove it as much as I can here. There we go. Yep. Now if I'm going to run out of these Q-tips, which looks like I am, I'm just going to use some paper towels to clean up the rest which should be okay. There we go. Alright. Let me get some paper towel. There we go. And fold it a few times so I can be very directional. And you gotta be very careful not to use your fingers on any of these components because no matter how clean your hands are, your hands have grease on them and oil and other really nasty things that do havoc to electronic computer parts. So sometimes it's better to actually have some gloves on, but I'm doing it quick and nasty so that it gets done fairly fast, which is okay. Okay. Now, yeah. all right. Okay, so the next step is to unbox the water block out of its original case. So let me move these the old components from these old heat sinks out of the way. There we go. All right, now, so here's the water block. So let me open that up. And we have some instructions. There we go. Here's the actual water block. And this is a water block uh, front for other types of processors like AMD and um, let's see what else does it do AMD sockets AM2, AM3 and a few others um, so we're not going to use any of those because those, not, those are not the CPUs that we have and on the back these are the back plates and the back plate that we need is this one right here. This is the back plate that we'll need uh, for the SR2 motherboard because we have the CPU, uh, the Xeon uh, 5690 CPU. So basically all these parts are not necessary for our installation. So I'm going to put them back in the box. There we go. <clears throat> and basically, let me take all this out so you can see what I need here. So we have a few parts here. We have the thermal paste. We have a few cleaning 
claws here. Um, we have some springs that we'll need for the four sides. We have some rather large screws that will make things real easy to screw down. We have the four posts that go through the motherboard and hold the water block from the top to the bottom and a couple of plastic, uh, plastic washers. So that's really about it. So first and foremost is we need to put the um, we need to put the thermal paste onto the CPU. So it looks like it's nice and solid. So let me let me uh, get a little pin here. Um, let me see. Here we go. A little teeny mini screwdriver that I'll use and break the the hole. There we go. Okay. I'm going to apply the thermal paste onto the CPU right in the middle. Now people are wondering what does this thermal paste do and why do you need it and can you use toothpaste instead because it looks definitely looks like toothpaste. 